to tonight's uh, public program of South School School uh, 2022. Uh, this is the, the so-called Conference 2. Uh, uh, we titled it Public Hearing on Remembering What, For Whom, and Why Manifestments. Uh, the, the conference includes uh, uh, invited, uh, um, let's say, uh, voices. Uh, Susanna Milewska, Milena Dunlevin, Daniel Konstantina. I mentioned participants, of course, four, but also everyone that is here and that could witness also the, the event. Uh, the conference departs from observing definitions and roles of the public hearing in the various levels of governance in states and societies maintained by and functioning under declared open government. I thought this format, Susanna would call it not yet a conference, is, is, uh, adapts to some initial observations. I'm still talking according to the Kosovo parliamentary practice, the public hearing can be defined as a mechanism for collecting information used by the parliamentary commission to review the policies and for the other side of the government. In addition, the former provides opportunities for parliamentary commissions to hear experts that are not heard or silenced. Uh, broaden the list of questions and raise questions and concerns. This event aims to provide public space for voices, observations, discussions, and readings of the context, processes, and testimonies on Manifesto Biennial and ongoing Manifesto 14 operations in Pristina. Here today, by a few in the international press, is the story already concluded. Uh, I have to say that the, this open format of public hearing was informed by some initial observations which came about from conversations with participants, participants of this program. Uh, in these informal evening casual conversations, instrumental for the event, I became aware of uh, another event organized by Manifesta on 23rd of July 2022 which had included, again, an event within the event. In the event, the representative of Thermokis community had read a statement on behalf of the Thermokis community and the critique directed towards Manifesto 14. The critique seemingly listed the lack of transparency in regards to funds used, among others. From this initial story, uh, I heard that the critique was not welcomed by organizers I learned how the critique was curved using offensive derogatory pejorative formulations. Of course, I was not pleased to hear about the experience and became curious to know more. I mean, I'm, I'm critical already to everything that has happened, but this was just an additional uh, concern. In my view, and from what I heard, this event within the event, if made public, could have the potential to become a so-called event that transforms across time and space and will be taking place at the forefront of social thought or historical thought uh, about Manifesta 14 in Pristina, how Wagner Pacifici in her political semiosis would put it. This approach to the event presents a technique of exploration of how events are constructed out of ruptures providing a mechanism for understanding eventful forms and flows from the micro level of individual life events to the macro level of historical revolutions, contemporary terrorist attacks and financial crisis to better understand what is at stake in the formation and flows of events that mark and shape our lives. Some brief information about the original event in the focus of this initial exploration. So the event was titled working on common ground. It was a roundtable discussion. And on the website of Manifesto 14, and I'm, I'm not screening anything, uh, it, it lists, among others, uh, a representative of the community, Kim Bursay, and other roundtable speakers include uh, representatives uh, of the former board of Manifesto, an ongoing board of Manifesto, Jan Lissenga, Ramlabor, Berlin, Bessalut, Elendrin, Chief Minister of the Council, Herr Lacek, Minister of 
Kalshin Music Sports, and the Kalshin Director of Kinal Mata. Ali Pritchil is the founder of Foundation 70, Bekim Rahu, Director of Kosovo Architecture Foundation, Karlo Rati, Urbanist, MIT Manifesto for the Christina Kate, Mediator, Lilina Irgiu Kai Walker, Arches Intervention, Papayan Rahami and Christina, Niki Musay, the architect, active fan of his community, Katrin Hanidak, Artist Manifesto for the Participant, Hedwig Vien, Director of Manifesto for the to explain about the, the organization itself, so Manifesto has created a Europe partner, Thermokis, in the community run Center in Christina, uh, shaped, this is from their website, with an event involving the concept of urban and civil exchange, a reflective attitudes on social and cultural issues, and a proactive community approach. Thermokis will be the co-creating partner for a number of events with Manifesto 14, on the website, creating workshops together with local leaders and marginalized communities, lectures, and debates on civic activism, environmental awareness, and reconciliation. Reconciliation. Manifesta says Israeli Bundes are part of the Democratic Research, the culture and community synergies of Christina. Therefore, when knowing about this event, I contacted Nikki Musay and arranged a meeting and asked her if she would be willing to read the statement once again. This time for the conference, two of summer school and school, and thus create space for an unrestricted discussion. In the process, in these past days, to other participants in our program, I had the opportunity to learn about some of the internal mechanisms or procedures of the community center, which was partnering with Manifesto, to reach decisions such as the decision about the content of the public statement, also the decision, the, the decision to read the public statement, and an official event organized by a partner organization, in this case, Manifesta Plan 14. These mechanisms include public meetings and public hearings, which are organized on a weekly basis as a forum where these and similar decisions are reached. After I had proposed the reenactment of the reading, the reply that I received was that the Eternal Case Committee would have to decide on a public meeting whether this public statement could be read once again in the public program, in this case of some schools, or whether the statement would first appear on the platforms, including weather. I had already expressed interest to know more about these internal mechanisms. However, I thought I should not be present in the meeting to debate any influence or bias and informed the representative that I would just to wait for the decision. The organizers notified me that uh, they would forward to me the official notes, because they also do this with procedure, from the meeting together with the decision. In this process, to get informed about the discussions, the ongoing discussions among partners in the front end, and in events organized by partners, I also inquired and requested the material from the roundtable discussion organized by another partner institution, Manifesto 14, and Geoarchy from the Tourism When reflecting, I did not expect that reenactment of a statement already read in public I would necessitate, necessitate another process within the organization. However, the request triggered an internal mechanism which seems to be used by organization whenever a decision is reached at the community level. So that the decision was re-evaluated. However, the public committee's format used to address the initial request was now transformed into so-called reflective group meetings, which should last, as we were told in the meeting, until October 30, which is the date set for the end of the Manifesto 14 in Christina. It could be a coincidence, but also the recording of the other roundtable discussion organized by the other partner institution of Manifesto was also lost. So there's no audio recording of the, of the discussion where seemingly also some critiques were expressed for the organization. To me, silencing of youth voices, also community voices, it shows a level of lack of, I'm going to use the word, democracy in our country or 
triggering mechanism that can help institute censorship uh, in, in many levels. Uh, for, uh, for this event, uh, I'm happy that, uh, I'm pleased that we would have with us Mina uh, uh, Lundin, who was present in the other event uh, in the round table discussion, and I basically just asked Mina if, if she could reenact her statement, you know, and so that we can discuss and hear the critique. I'm also pleased that we have with us Lorena Lepska, which will give us um, her experience uh, and her, uh, let's say, encounters and a more or less a historical overview of why this event exists, basically, and how it, uh, it evolved in always in her view. And I hope after we will be able to to continue the, the, the discussion. Uh, I will keep it brief for now. I will just invite uh, initially Suzanne to take the floor. Uh, and uh, I thank you once again for joining us for, for, for this uh, discussion. Thank you. Inviting me here, and far from acting as uh, expert witness, I will be here uh, kind of staging the uh, main character witness <laughs> who manifested. Uh, I will speak from my own experience. And while sitting uh, in the dark room waiting for the electricity to come, something really strange, a memory from my past, a blast from my past, around. The first time that I was ever invited to manifesto, it was uh, actually uh, the, the second manifesto that took place in Luxembourg in 1998. I was a very young uh, curator at the beginning of my career with no money to go there, even though I was invited, but I had to have at least uh, you know, some pocket money. I had to actually borrow some money from my friends to take a taxi to the airport or to get there. And to cut the story short, at the very same time, my electricity in my apartment was cut off because I didn't have money to pay for electricity. So there was a strange kind of coincidence with waiting in the dark for the discussion to start. Uh, it was, uh, as I said, the second manifesto. The first manifesto uh, started uh, in 1996 in Rotterdam, and it was uh, very kind of uh, promising, uh, if I can say so, because it promised that uh, the distinction, the differences between East and West uh, after the fall of the wall uh, gradually started to diminish and vanish, and the manifesto would help with that. And uh, 26 years later, we still uh, haven't seen this promise to uh, I followed uh, the other manifestos too. I actually, uh, in 2002 and 2003, was teaching a course on the Federal College and Cultural College. And uh, to be honest, you know, a manifesto was. Uh, one of my case studies that I was very positive about because I was teaching uh, different models of uh, uh, exhibitions and uh, this big uh, mega exhibitions by Niels. And Manifesto was nomadic, as you know, uh, with, uh, the, with the first uh, biennial uh, of a nomadic uh, model and structure. So, uh, um, a few uh, years after my first uh, participation in two conferences during the Luxembourg Manifesto, I was even approached with an idea uh, to actually uh, submit the application for Manifesto to take place in Skopje. Not many people know about this. I turned it down because uh, Already I felt a little bit skeptical about uh, the whole model and uh, at that time I couldn't see myself being uh, complicit in this uh, already problematic model 
I must say that now I see this as a kind of a prophecy because uh, from this perspective I see that this is not something that I was fully subscribed to. Uh, to go back to the present now, why I'm going to tell this. Uh, because uh, I'm not really so confident to talk about the uh, manifesto in Krishna because I must confess I haven't seen the whole edition and also I don't speak uh, of anyone so I cannot really uh, be the ear, the local ear to understand uh, all these uh, local objections to the exhibition. But at the same time, I can speak about the model itself, the promise of the model, and uh, where this promise actually somehow uh, not to dissolve, but it turned into its own contradiction. In a way. Uh, I will refer to the text, the introduction to the green catalog. It's interesting, interesting enough, it's almost the same nuance as the green uh, color that is used for the design this year. Uh, it was uh, the catalog of this uh, second manifesto where Robert Fleck, one of the co-curators of that uh, edition, uh, wrote a very positive, you know, very optimistic, enthusiastic text about this uh, imaginary former East uh, I say imagine former East because he uh, somehow projected uh, former East as a kind of a uh, hope, let's say. Like nothing is there and manifest uh, the goal uh, to these countries and somehow help uh, to fill in, you know, this hope. And this was already problematic for me. Uh, I, uh, simply, uh, maybe I uh, simplify things, but in my own text for the same title, uh, not criticizing something that I didn't even know that uh, will be published in the same book, I mentioned exactly this kind of uh, uh, colonial and also self colonial issues that uh, we had already in Macedonia and uh, uh, elsewhere in ex Yugoslavia, because uh, in a way, you know. Um, Ex Yugoslavia, for example, was put in the same uh, kind of uh, pool uh, together with the all Eastern European countries, which was already a mistake uh, that all the social differences were not uh, recognized uh, between different republics. And this was uh, continuing all the time. One thing that I was really intrigued and interested about Manifesto. Uh, and this is why I submitted several texts when I was invited to other editions, uh, one that took place in Italy, for example, was the regional perspective. This was also a promise that the manifesto doesn't come to one city only, but it promised that uh, it will somehow expand from one city maybe and will go further to the neighboring countries and uh, I don't know uh, whether this succeeded in uh, Italy or in Spain, but uh, definitely it didn't in Pristina um, um, now or in the edition in Ljubljana, for example. Uh, all these promises somehow were uh, very uh, loudly publicized, but uh, it uh, failed in the delivery part. Uh, when I say about this uh, year manifest that the original perspective somehow, uh, at least for me, was lost, is uh, that uh, all this promise about uh, uh, communication and cooperation with the partners from the neighboring countries uh, is not visible uh, from outside. Um, this is uh, my last point, actually, that uh, this, uh, in, when you get the program, you simply don't get it, uh, you know, this uh, promise is on the paper, but uh, in the list of the participants, uh, it's not visible at all. Uh, last night, uh, our uh, gave me the book that was published for Skopje, by Skopje participants. It was the first time that I saw this, and I couldn't find anywhere in the program where to find this uh, booklet, 
uh, where is the content that is uh, somehow uh, you know, reflected in this book? But it's a kind of mess uh, in the terms of this regional perspective. Um, to be more uh, clear, why I think that the uh, regional perspective is important exactly because of the model, uh, initial model of being nomadic. You know, uh, nomadic you know, as something that will open up to this kind of uh, communications and relations between uh, neighboring uh, countries that are in so called conflict and uh, manifest as somehow projected this. Uh, I, I think really very superficially as a, one of their aims. And of course, we uh, have the presentation of Martin Fritz uh, um, that uh, actually there was one manifesto that was even cancelled, the sixth one, exactly when uh, Nicosia, exactly because of this uh, uh, failed projection of uh, being uh, able, uh, I think it's a very short thing, being able to negotiate and to help. Uh, the communication between the conflicted uh, contested parties elsewhere. You go as a guest and you imagine that you will, uh, here is the word that uh, already Albert mentioned, you will help the reconciliation of the so called uh, conflicted parties. And this kind of uh, model, you uh, can easily uh, predict to why I'm so critical about this model. It's uh, very kind of uh, colonial patronizing because uh, this is not how conservation works. This uh, actually has to grow from uh, the local uh, upwards, you know, uh, not the opposite. So, uh, the direction of reconciliation is uh, in the opposite side. So just to go now back and to summarize, I was talking about my own experience, about the uh, you know, uh, kind of dark in, uh, from which you expected some light to come, which uh, uh, sometimes uh, it does, but sometimes uh, more often it doesn't come. Uh, I was talking a little bit more uh, about the uh, history of uh, the letters, the first uh, six editions of uh, Manifesta, and uh, I uh, refrained from uh, to. Uh, to the, uh, this uh, um, edition uh, exactly because when I was talking with uh, Mariana, I uh, received some information that I didn't know, and I, I feel now very kind of uh, this, uh, not so comfortable by issuing uh, criticism, even though I felt that I was right in all my. Uh, kind of predictions and anticipations, but this was by intuition, not based on facts. And uh, as art historian, I, I'm really trying to refrain from um, giving some verdicts in this uh, hearing. Uh, what I would uh, say it was this uh, personal uh, kind of uh, bearing witness from what I know, from what I've experienced, and also as a uh, Partly as an expert witness about uh, models, uh, different models of exhibition, this was uh, something that I could really uh, state and uh, sign if you want to. So this is something that I would uh, uh, hesitate to, to discuss later. Uh, but uh, I'm really interested in uh, some concrete uh, uh, misunderstandings. Because uh, as soon as I arrived here, I hear different partners or different uh, excluded or included partners in Manifesta and there are uh, different objections and experiences and if you accumulate all these experiences uh, doesn't uh, really sound as these promise, uh, promises were fulfilled. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Susanna. Uh, do you want to stay there or do you want to stay there? Uh, yeah. let, let me now invite uh, Milana. Uh, and I will just read briefly uh, your biography because we, we already had to uh, present here. Uh, Milana Burderi is a fine artist and director of the private cultural center Aconius uh, in, in Vitravica. After completing her studies in psychology, 
to the into the faculty of arts in Brussels uh, Community. Uh, she has 30 solo exhibitions and over 50 group exhibitions in the country and abroad, including Italy, France, Austria, Bosnia, and Herzegovina, Slovenia. Her paintings have been included in many selections of contemporary creativity of serves in Kosovo and Lithuania. She is a participant in several art colonies in the country and abroad. Uh, Dunjerin has published works in many publications and international thematic anthologies and the field of psychology and art. She was awarded for her artistic creativity. She is the founder and artistic director of the Private Culture Center Aquarius, which has been operating since 2015. Founder and director of the Creative School of Painting, Amalia Atelier, small atelier. She is, she is the editor of the art program North City Jazz and Blues of the International, uh, of the same name, International Festival. Collaborator and organizer of many cultural events in the region. Thank you so much for being with us uh, tonight. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I am Gerti Bell, I'm sorry, I'm young. What is, uh, I want to tell you here, when you hear some story about you, it's, it's on that, how that you are not <laughs> here. Uh, it is not nice feeling now because Albert is give us a uh, stage and 10 and 30, and people are actually to enjoy your life, to maybe drink something, smoke cigarettes. They friendship with each other, not because this is a serious story about some festival and art. And I'm not uh, in good position, I think, to now to take your attention. And uh, what I want to tell you tonight when I'm here, what is the, for me, I think, that is important that you hear. I hope that between all the people here is have young artists in some main part, that the future is staying to be in your hands one day. And it will be perfect that one festival, how big it is, manifesta, to have an everyday question in the heart. How is feeling Mimosa? How is feeling uh, Fiori? How is feeling Milana? How is feeling somebody who is young artist on also? How is living there? How is condition of life? And it is ready for the great huge art that is bringing. Did need something better in the life, or is satisfied with it, what is here. Then uh, Heidegger's the make some mistake, but mistakes always is happen. Uh, what is the good? Yes, that this manifest is great festival for sure. If not great, you will not exist in 14th edition. Then he know job and he know how to make some uh, great job and how is people feeling about manifest? I think that we have different. Position. Some of them think that it is something great, some of them that is something that is not okay. We have different open, opposite mind about festival to come here. It is a good opportunity, I think, for one city to be here. But uh, in an, another way, we have a lot of missing. Is mistake to the organization or mistake in some uh, people who is being part of uh, some kind of consultant from uh, area. I don't know, but it's mistakes I have a lot. I think that a lot of young people is not have a chance to show how is uh, can be future artist. I'm sure that manifest is missing some people, including in the festival, because it's much important that uh, when great artists around the world come here first to meet this area, to meet people, to speak with the people, and to understand how people live every day. And I prefer that all of you, if you have some question, ask me something because it's much better than if I speak about some stuff which maybe is not uh, so interesting in the weather park. Did somebody have some question, any question about us, about anything? Can I ask a question? Yes, you can. Mm -hmm. That I immediately felt that you know, it was very uh, uh, uncomfortable by criticizing Manifesta after I talked to you. One thing, uh, one of the reasons why uh, was the information that you shared with me. Uh, and I think it would be interesting for the others about this lack of uh, artists uh, of. Uh, 
Sylvia, a rich that come from also. Is it true? It is true, and it is all the one choice. You have a lot of true like this because I know because of past people is uh, I think that all of this have same experience in the past. Most of the festival and most of happening that is happening around in Kosovo is not including people who is living from uh, Serbians who is living in Kosovo actually always uh, doing some kind of uh, communication between Serbians from Belgrade or Serbians from Novi Sad or from some other city in Serbia or to make uh, connection directly with the people who live in Kosovo. Actually, most of them don't know each other, artists who live in Kosovo, Serbians, so this. But I think it is the wrong way because can be possible that somebody who is not living here to speak about our problem. We are different, we have a lot of uh, stuff to talk between, between us and if we are not talking together, I don't think that we can have some better future. I search in how I can, how it's possible to uh, search in um, uh, like local artists who is uh, living in, in Serbian population in Kosovo. Uh, did somebody know any information about open car or some information that can be applied somewhere or not? People is, don't have this information, this information stakeholders, I think. In, uh, also, so many Armenians that I know are this is from Prizre, Uroševa, Sferizaj, uh, and these other cities also don't know for this. Then I think that there is some missing uh, information, and, it's probably, and really it is true that uh, not have any other artists from Serbia and Unity and Turkish to be included in the manifesto from Kosovo to leave Kosovo, maybe somebody from Belgrade or some other cities. The reason why I thought that this was for me shocking, is exactly this uh, monument that we've been discussing a lot uh, since I came here. The monument uh, that was uh, covered in pink folio and that was uh, called Brotherhood uh, and Unity. And uh, if we talk about that, this is one of the aims of this uh, exhibition, you know, to discuss this kind of very difficult uh, uh, Contentious issues of this concrete situation, then uh, this goes in parallel. You know, it's much easier to project the uh, um, monument to be dedicated to brotherhood and unity than to discuss the actual situation in light of the monument, uh, which obviously is not. Uh, Mm -hmm. Memory for some monument doesn't matter where it's from, some sculpture for some art, especially for women who is coming in from this time, is uh, much important stuff is, uh, is much important stuff is uh, memories of this uh, moment. You know, so many grandpa or grandmother is maybe kiss each other from this moment. So many people there is first time take a photo from school times to age, the first time coming in Pristina, you know, you come from village, you go in the city, big city, and you take photo from this monument. Then uh, the monument is not, uh, this moment when we put the monument in the open space in some city or some, uh, I don't know, some land somewhere around, in this moment when we put them in the public space, we must know that there is not more from artists. This is from people. People live every day with this. This artist out or from uh, this monument is coming maybe one time in the year, maybe never. Is having a lot of monuments that uh, authors is not meet till moment start uh, making this uh, monument till the end of life. You know, it's not necessary that he is been there. He puts the soul inside the monument, but we are living in this monument. The monument is very delicious uh, part of uh, one population of people for mind, the psychologist uh, life uh, of a lot of uh, important stuff for our people. And I think that is most important there is that people who uh, have idea about changing urban uh, culture and change architectures uh, in way that the manifesto is doing in this kind of postmodernism uh, way of changing the uh, monuments and this stuff is really little bit dangerous to play with this and because people don't feel safe. And I'm sure that this monument is have personal time and personal feelings and personal uh, way of uh, living there and is not need for sure being very big course.
and it doesn't matter for the course. Actually, I must tell you true. For me, this moment is look the best way that is looking now. I like this kind of sculpture. Mm -hmm. But this is not sculpture for this artist. This is not time that this moment is come. We need to care about uh, monuments and we need to care which monument we choose, we need to care how we behave with, uh, with these monuments. And I, in my opinion, I think that uh, some uh, action that the university is doing is not enough meet uh, all around the monument, not just monument. And for this, uh, first, I think that it's important to tell you, especially if somebody of you artist, for art is important three stuff. First, that you are loyal with art. Second one, that you know the research. Because if you're not researching the art, you will not move from one point. You must research in the past, in the future, and today. It doesn't matter, but you must research. And third time, third stuff that is very important, to know to have some kind of freedom for polemic and for discussion. If we don't have this free stuff, we can be artists and we can change art pay. In this moment, we have only one artist still, centuries and centuries. What is the change centuries start? Is changing polemic discussion, open mind, freedom mind, and thinking and researching. And I think that first of all, how big this manifesto is needed to research where is come, how is come, which kind of monuments is state, which people is included in all of this. I must say that uh, in currently this uh, discourse around artistic research is so mean, is so serious, <coughs> and then it's really kind of ironic to come here and to find out that the artist made this uh, intervention on the monument without even getting the title of the name of the monument. Yeah. Correctly, so you could be less speaking about artistic research. But um, uh, do you know that uh, currently there is this hype of uh, uh, socialist modernist monuments uh, around uh, in Europe? So perhaps this was the first inspiration, you know? it was an uh, easy uh, inspiration, but obviously uh, getting it wrong from the start didn't help much. The opposite. Maybe we can move on to the next Yes, we'll be the same. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. 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 At the American University of Kosovo, so I have a different kind of insight. But from the very beginning, uh, the one problem was I saw who was included because I know the histories of, of uh, the artists that are prominent. One is the tribalism, so there's a certain clique of artists that were invited to France, which is not necessarily uh, problematic at first, but then I thought of who was excluded. Um, so that became an issue for me to look at because uh, Susanna and I were talking. In a place like this, with something so big, uh, this is by far the largest amount of money spent on an art project in contemporary art. I mean, uh, it, it's much larger than the, the budget of the National Gallery of Art. So who gets excluded? It, it, it's more than just, oh, this time around you're not included. It could actually be harmful <clears throat> in the space that, uh, that Kosovo is. That's one kind of criticism. So if you're not there, you be looked at later as someone who didn't belong. And it's not actually true. It's not actually real that you didn't belong. You just didn't fit into the tribal clique of the moment. That's one criticism. The second is um, the, the interventions, and I'm trying to wrap my head around this, uh, this institute that's being built as part of Manifesta. It was the Center for Narrative Practice. And you, 
it's almost, even that, that term in English could be a psychology term. It's a, it's a center where psychology will be explored, talk therapy of some sort. But whose psychology? And at the same time, in, inside of this is institutions that I've worked with, or people doing work that I've worked with, that are already doing this, and have been working on it for 20 years. So Stazione was one of them. So uh, it's not open to a criticism from the very beginning, and I think it's uh, a part to your comment. You don't know the space, and your, um, your imposition onto what Pristina is, it, it doesn't function even in my experience from 10 years. Another is the interventions around the city. So uh, the idea of reclaiming uh, public spaces doesn't work. It doesn't, it's not functioning. 20 years ago, it was a socialist environment where there was not private spaces. So I don't think the general public would even have an understanding of what it would mean to reclaim a space. Reclaim from what? What is this reclamation happening? What, what is the, how does that fit into the contemporary Kosovo world? And uh, I guess my last sort of criticism, which is tied to the other two, um, which is what happens in Kosovo very often. I think the real functionality of Manifesta has already happened. And what is that? The government got to promote a nationalist agenda that's based on a political party that projects uh, uh, the political party's uh, ambitions uh, for Kosovo and the world. So Dua Lipa came and had her selfies, uh, the, the, um, which is okay, it's not a bad thing necessarily. That's uh, in some way, it could be argued as a good thing. But there's not research done. So it's just the government projecting a story and it's already over. It's that thing is just kind of done. So the artists that are in there, of course they would love to be in there. It's the biggest event with the largest amount of money that's here. And the ones that aren't are somehow harmed just for not belonging. That would not happen in Berlin, that would not happen in New York, that would not happen in other places in Europe, but very specifically to Kosovo. That damage can't be discussed in any way, if you can even call it damage. But as a teacher for 10 years in Kosovo, that's damage. So you have to work with people who are somehow outside of that story. Um, and now I'm essentially looking for a way to write about it where those who have participated, I want to say one good thing about it. I watch in Facebook and Instagram and social media reactions to the works that are on display. Younger people, students, and it's very nostalgic stuff. It's exactly what you said. It's hearing the music uh, and then feeling really connected to the music. Um, seeing an image and not having encountered that in contemporary art. So it's a personal connection, like a family connection. Um, but that's something different. That's a nostalgia. That's something different than, uh, than contemporary art and research and development of what Manifesta uh, purports to be. So I'll leave more comments there. But to open up the floor maybe for any
curator or who will do the research, especially if it's for the public space, because I was thinking this probably could be interpreted and something about just museums and how, and, and also how sometimes it's problematic, so how, uh, I don't know, I don't know exactly like what I said, but I think it's on YouTube everything and it's interesting maybe if we start to talk about Manifesta to know also what happened before it started to happen. And I think that what it was said here, it, it opened uh, at each one of you, kind of said something related to Manifesta, but also something else. First of all, what uh, Albert uh, stated, I think it's not discussed later so much importance of this, because, uh, but from Susanna, yes, it's the importance of um, how important it was this exposing this, this transparency that exists, or how something it's not even, it was not even allowed to be exposed, like what actually happened, and how this shows that there are many other problems in the way of functioning or choosing and everything. But then each one, like two of the last uh, participants, have like their personal experiences of what should have been included or what should have happened. I don't want to go personally in the comments. I just uh, it just reminded me like. It's now too personal visit, I would say, but how kind of it, it was needed for me as a person and as an artist, let's say, but I don't want to call myself an artist, but I was kind of practicing this for some time when I, when I uh, moved out of Christina and that I didn't want to be included on this because I was tired of this. Um, of these clans or of these groups of people and the way that things get organized because it's kind of quite tiring. So what, uh, what it is, uh, I think that it's important because it was mentioned this, that now it's too late to discuss and maybe we should not talk for this, but I think no, we should talk because this shows that even if it's no electricity or if there are technical problems, if we want to talk for something or especially if, if it's if we are not scared to question and to ask, it, we can do the discussion and we can talk, but if we want to hide and we, if we want not to talk or not to show what it was said, then even if it was electricity, it would be lost the recording, how to say. So I, I didn't say nothing, I just tried to summarize a bit like what each of any one of you. I think if we go to the discussion of monuments, and especially of this monument of brotherhood and unity, this would open. I don't. I don't want to go to this topic because this would open. It would be really long. Uh, I, I just would be longer in the talk, and it will not be nothing connected to the manifesto thing or whatever is it. Because then this goes in general with um, how. Uh, why certain uh, why certain monuments were placed in the public space, and then what actually happened in these spaces? Yeah, it is this memory of the photos, but then uh, okay, what was the what actually happened in Yugoslavia in general? And, uh, okay, what and how how real and how much happened of brotherhood and unity for real? Like or like what happened? Uh, how much? Okay, it is this memory and it is the way that then how much people remember this monument by that name or they have feelings towards that or if they also, how do they react also to, and how much do they remember what happened in the Second World War and is this okay because it was not, um, it was not talked enough or because that something else happened that kind of erased it because it's replaced by other ways that the other social relations happened that made it less important. So, uh, it, and it, it, it also opens and the way that it's treated public space and, 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 and privatization and everything like post-war, what happened, this just opens another discussion which, I think, which is more complicated and it's something else that I would like to go. But I think that uh, uh, 
I really, as it seen, it, it's, but I, I really, uh, I just imagine like if someone from Manifest and Thermokist will listen to this later. And it would not be possible to bring others to talk for this because as it seems, it, it seems that they wouldn't be able to talk because it was not willingness to include them to, to talk from the beginning and it, how it was like this organization and from, uh, uh, from the beginning, like how it was everything organized. But uh, I think that, uh, I don't know, it's important that if someone from you has some other experience or something else to share to say something. I'm sorry because I talk too much, but I just try to say something. The, the, the thing that I can think is Albert's comment, which is more like, what is the, uh, you use the democratic process, but what would the democratic process be? Because I sense the terminal cases, um, be, because of personal relationships, they might be afraid to make a comment that would cause a problem uh, with somebody personally, which is also a part of the curatorial What's the word they use to get the curators? Mediators. Mediators. This mediator process um, was material. So there's something about that. Now we're in a quiet mire of sorts where we can't have people come forward and discuss openly because it's closed off because of the damage they might do to themselves. They're bleeding the fifth in the US term. If I say something, it might incriminate myself, you know, or something. And so there, there is a good, nice parallel of discussion about is democratic processes in that time. Is the only one of the things that uh, when I, I never hear before, but when people is invited from Italy to city to be part of the panel discussion about uh, um, like some level of complementary art in. Kosovo and uh, I had this invitation and of course other can go there I think in this second part of discussion and everything what they told tonight I told them also this thing that these people here for me before I ever know about festival I know about festival but not about festival in Krishna but this day I also speak about a lot of problems that we have like uh, um, that uh, example young people don't have like uh, visa-free passport that we don't have uh, enough potential to get a job for the young uh, artistic population that we all this problem I think is there and I think that these people here but I think that also we can confused because I don't think so that this meet enough all this situation. So I just want it was very interesting what Susanna said. Uh, in terms of, uh, because I didn't see everything, but what I sense is that uh, manifest has taken place in some super overcharged, historically overcharged spaces, and the sense of kind of this attempt to try to uh, reconciliate the neighbors that were having conflicts, I, I kind of could sense it. But then again, I'm, I'm thinking like, okay, any attempt for a manifesto or, or any big event like this to try to write, raise up to, uh, to level up to these expectations is just bound to fail. Uh, so, um, and I think like, um, and also like this, um, some of the organizers are having a deal with the government and they're taking their money. So by that they're, the government, they, they have their agenda in terms of kind of, let's say, uh, a Marxist reading of art in terms of emancipating the, the masses. And, um, and, and that, in return, burdens artists to kind of buy into that politics of uh, making something that negotiates this discourses so they could fit into the manifesto, more or less. And um, so, like, the, like many of these events, like they, 
they pretty much fit into the agenda of the. I, I feel like they are like any event like this is 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 bound is is condemned to uh, to buy into the agenda of the funding body, which is most of the time the government. But where is uh, who is head? Who is there for the agency of art itself? <laughs> Sometimes I think so. Yeah. I quickly comment on this. It's really interesting comment. Uh, in fact, while listening to you, I realized that uh, what bothers me with the manifest is exactly this kind of salesman logic. You know? They come and promise it, they will for this and that. Uh, maybe if they haven't promised that, we wouldn't be so critical. Huh? Uh, but of course, we have to curb our enthusiasm about these uh, high expectations of uh, any uh, contemporary art uh, manifestation event by, you know, that they will change uh, the whole system. That's, of course, not possible. But at least you should somehow be realistic in your uh, promises. This promise with this newly um, emerged or local institution, the center of all narrative practices, for example. Yeah. This I can easily sense here, you know, over promise. But, uh, but I think that without making those promises, you won't get into the place to get all this funding. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course, that's the pattern. I think to fail is quite good, actually, not. And I think, for instance, when Nicosia edition failed, I think it serves a certain purpose to show the complexity of the problem, right? Because you can be naive and think that maybe you can intervene in a certain situation, and maybe you are not politically enough emancipated to understand the context. Because I still think you can intervene, right? But to fail even to make an attempt and to pose like you are, because if you insert the word reconciliation in your project and you don't include any uh, members of the social community in the exhibition, right, that's not even trying. Right? So why the why the word is there? Because for me, I would be happy if manifesto would fail in trying, right? and not just serve the agendas of, of, of politicians. And it was a constant fail, one failure after another, one failure after another. But when you read the reviews, and for me, and this is a bigger problem, actually, when you read the reviews, the reviews hail it, right? And what Milana said, I mean, there are no voices, you know, which are in the reviews or this. So, I mean, as a touristic mechanism, it works quite well, actually. Have a lot of people coming to see it. I, I don't know what it brings in terms of monetary uh, circulation or anything, but it's like well visited because we are in one of the uh, one of the buildings that we use is part of the ethnographic museum, and there are rivers of people coming actually to see it. And what you see inside there is Marubi, you know, an exhibition of a museum in Shkodra of again Albanian. Uh, Albanians posing for photographers in what, what century, let's say. It's like, and this is being circulated, it's in DocuFest, it's here and there. We are just infatuated with the idea that the family photographers were taking pictures of Albanians in some century. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like all the time, it's circulating. It's now in manifest, but tomorrow it will be somewhere else. It's like all the time. Yeah. Uh, but it's one of the same thing. You know, whether they install it in these, this way or they, there were stickers in the walls or this. It's the, the same thing again. But what I wanted to say, you, you said, for instance, Berlin. Actually, there are a lot of artists who work on these issues, so on the edges of, of these crisis situations. You don't need, you just need to include them. And you will not burden them. You would create space for the practice to be influential, actually. And it doesn't necessarily mean that all these flocks of artists are all, all, all of a sudden become engaged, right? But in many cases, it does. 
months and just to, to, to tell you a story, for instance, in, in Kosovo, after the war, a number of international, very prominent curators started visiting. But they, the war ended and mm -hmm. let's see what is there, right? And let's expose and they often also expose it. But, and then uh, there was a generation of young artists, mostly painters, they heard, for instance, that Emmett Block is coming. What does he exhibit in video? There was no training in video at the Academy of Art, they were all painters, you know. And they started improvising with video because a creative character was coming. And then the generation was somehow created. Some of those went back in painting after two or three attempts right, to, to jumpstart their career in media or something. But it matters. For instance, if Manifesto would select a curator and not a mediator or a team of curators that would research, and I think the situation would be completely different. And even if they would fail, right, we would shed light to one another complexity of this society, which is on constant transition. You know, it's constantly on these liminal positions, you know, trying to move forward. And not rather just decorate, you know, uh, and very often violate monuments, you know, and allow artists on top of these things, you know, all the time, you know, and without really uh, understanding anything out of it and just serving for mere, mere circulation of certain ideology or, or certain names of, of politicians, actually. Because initially, the main value for Manifesto was the brick factory. Only when faced with a critique, why they're not using. Gurnia, the, as the building, they, in a chaotic mood, they went to uh, Grand Hotel. Because Grand Hotel was never in the project. Because then they saw what is the challenge with the, the brick factory, then they went to the Grand Hotel. The funny thing is, Grand Hotel is the venue for very efficient business happening all the time. And when you go there, on, on one entrance you have a very efficient and on the other entrance you have a manifesto. It's, it's like an amazing uh, marriage, you know. It's like really. Uh, but this is the context. But why these observations are not part of anything? For me, that's just because I, I'm sure that some critical is here visiting this, and it's not only in this in this gathering. Yeah, but one more point about like the, all the writing and all the hailing and uh, the, 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 I mean, like all those uh, magazines that are invited to see a show. I mean, they won't be invited if they, uh, yeah. if they you know, it's kind of, and we all know that when you read this, you should kind of not take it too seriously. That you know, maybe you don't really do that. Actually, there are very good organizers. So if you go on the website. You have press and you have everything is there. They're fantastic to organize. Because yeah. I told them the start, this is the yeah. festival. Mm -hmm. We are maybe we don't like them, but he's pretty fun because 14 years they have experience. He works this. very well and he still has support. This is the I I am not quite sure like how that we have opposite mind for some stuff and this is the beauty of our uh, meeting but if one day you are being quite smart to make something like this in Pristina and to transport this festival around the world, I would be so proud for any of you if somebody can do this. But my interview here, you know, you do have a bag of this homegrown, which I visited the office uh, the other day, which is Autostrada. It is uh, not anywhere mentioned, you know, this is really interesting. In the context of Manifesto, it's completely silenced, you know, any kind of mentioning that there is another other venue that is more regional, more local. I'm not comparing, but there is no comparison, but still, you know, uh, it, it's no, one of these things. It, it's one of these things that, uh, you know, uh, you know, this uh, bird's view, you know, sees holes where there are so many different little uh, pebbles.
No, I just want to add about this confusion about touristic. I don't know how many people are going in uh, Malpesa and what profit of people are visiting. But when we talk about ethnology, even if we don't have uh, this special piece before, it was very visiting. So I think if we are going to see performance of number, we shouldn't confuse because museums and this, uh, uh, especially for uh, ethnology, it was always visiting very high because it's always into the promoting in a magazine. I cannot talk for others, but for a ethnology museum, always sure. better visiting. Sure, that's the most visited site with a variety of visitors because we pay attention also who is visiting because exactly. we have the varieties. Exactly. Uh, is, 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 it's good one to think about. Mm -hmm. This is like some kind of language of the future. We know this in every life. You are not enough beauty and smart if you don't have good photo on Facebook, Instagram, and this kind of stuff. If you don't know to make this level of public uh, attention to be, everything must be some kind of uh, tabloid. You know, some, it's not important what is in. In, in the inside, it's not about writing on the first page, but it's your first uh, piece. Nobody, uh, just an amalaja is very important for everything. And especially, uh, we must know something that complementary art is something that is start uh, with some kind of art, with amalaja, you know. And then when we want to be like somebody who is criticizing this, we are not so ready. We must do thinking about history of art in this time when it's starting to be complementary, he started with Ambalaja. This is reaction to this. And we must know that in the future, all art that will come in by complementary uh, will be coming very fast, but uh, deleting of this art will be more faster. You know, this is the problem, that does not have uh, some continuum in uh, Existing like this one fest that festival is now and for next year when you ask somebody who is not festival is not fest. Maybe not till the end of the year. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, any other? Yeah. Uh, yeah. May I, I just have one question because uh, I haven't followed the other like, fest so uh, I don't know anything about that and I was wondering if this is uh, saying that uh, they all kind of failed, um, but it still keeps on going. That this uh, wouldn't be the first time that uh, there is criticism. And I was wondering if there were um, like open letters or something in the, um, in the past in other cities that have criticized a lot and how Manifesta reacted on it and um, how you're going to do it now, maybe? Like, is there a way to? get some attention to those topics as they have been topics the last few years and somehow Manifesta has to react on it um, if, if it has been a topic. Maybe I'll repeat some probably. <laughs> I can imagine that uh, uh, aside of this failed Manifesta that was in the Nicosia that was completely cancelled, there were always some kind of uh, critical responses. Uh, I didn't say that all uh, manifestos failed, but uh, there was a, uh, one big difference between manifestos that were taking place in the so-called former West and the manifestos that were taking place in our region or uh, similar countries from the East, for example, there was one manifesto that took place in Russia. And that's when also uh, many artists uh, wrote letters and uh, actually resigned from manifesto. And uh, there were always some scandals, but uh, there was no such a big failure like this in Nicosia, where it was the political problem was still uh, promised there, the uh, kind of imaginary you know, project of manifesto was really we should think in the table uh, you know fulfill this promise to 
have the exhibition on both sides of Cyprus, and on the Turkish and the Greek side. And this is when this was like to be of a problem that they couldn't deliver. So the, uh, the curators resigned, they had to sign a non disclosure agreement, and this was the uh, moment that uh, Alvin mentioned that he thought that uh, that's when a manifesto would stop, but it didn't. It uh, somehow restructured itself, and for some years it uh, uh, kept the promises towards the West. You know, they moved towards the West where they could make these uh, promises kind of on a local or regional level more fulfilled. Because the original idea of my best is always you know, to have partnership with local uh, institutions, with local firms. I see it as a kind of public-private partnership without the public. <laughs> and maybe ironize, because most of all is the private businesses, even the manifesto is a kind of privatized foundation. So I don't have so high hopes, but still, as I always said, you know, uh, it should, uh, at least they should uh, try. But I didn't say that all manifestos failed. You know, there are always some kind of uh, results uh, around that, uh, but uh, somehow the world changed, you know. This was my uh, main uh, conclusion for myself. The world changed and the model that was conceived uh, right after the fall of the world, just a few years after that, uh, somehow cannot be sustainable anymore. And in this kind of private-private uh, partnerships in our region often ends with, uh, I, I can say the C word, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, am I allowed? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the corruption. <laughs> so this is my basic discomfort about this. I've also learned think that each edition failed. And partially, I think we are responsible also if this edition failed. Because uh, earlier on, uh, we were the ones who invited Manifesta. So, Pristina competed to get Manifesta. Uh, in political terms and in political uh, developments, the political party now in power uh, used to be in power in Pristina, and this is when it launched the bid, the Manifesta. Director of Culture was a close collaborator. Manifesto first came to one section. They didn't go to this tribal uh, organization and they came to ask us actually if they would like to come, would we uh, welcome them? You know, it was very, very direct. And I said, yes, but we'll try to use you, right? Because for me, that's a mechanism. And we, we knew the potential. It's not that I think highly of it in terms of Art and uh, whatever, but yeah, the potential was there. What for? We were advocating for a long time for a new typology of a museum of contemporary art here, and I thought we will use this thing, you know. And we were very open. Even in the last meeting that we had with them, I told them, like, you're not getting anywhere, and we met in this building. I told them, postpone, you're late. And no, because they, they already have their own other venture ahead. Barcelona. So this is a mechanism, this is a, a financial also mechanism that doesn't allow for failures. Right? And they already uh, set the goal for the next one, Kiev. You can imagine with the war in Ukraine. And so they, they, they hunt very well, you know, and it, it's interesting and why they're there they do it. But the problem is the, the missed opportunity because normally a venture like that after Nicosia should be even more political and not to retreat into mere business. You know, this is the, the, the issue. You know, if you face a political situation, you become more political and try to address other issues if you fail to do that. And also the, it, it is oversimplified why they failed in Nicosia. Actually it's not it's not entirely true why they failed. And we had, we had here one of the curators in the program and we were discussing. We had also the chief producer of Manifesta in the program and we were discussing a lot. So 
but the, the, for us and why this, this public session is important is to keep the discussion on the issue going and to uh, maintain the level of criticality because I think it has to go to another level. It has to be audited. It has to, we have to know what happened, why it happened, who was involved, you know, so that maybe we, we, we help other situations deal with this more prepared because I think we are not prepared. You know, the context was not prepared, the artists were not prepared. But also, we need to forget something uh, for our position and for artists from Moldova area is like uh, something that we are don't feel very comfortable. But I must tell you that all artists for around the world that is including this manifesto is very proud of this part of manifesto mm -hmm. and is feeling like in the biography to have a be a part of manifesto is high level. Then all people who is coming that I meet, and it's a couple of people who is coming to manifesto. Some radio work here, then also some sculpture girl and something like this. All of these people that I meet is very proud and very happy that this part of manifesto is with that is personal, very high level of success. Dependent feeling that we are feeling like that we are only here and that manifest is coming. Can I just add one more thing to what I uh, said? Like, but I think really this schemes of schemes of events like manifesta I sense they work like this in terms of to be critical enough to land the next peak but not too critical to scare off the next hosting city so, so it's kind of like you, you sell something but you're you sell being critical but then you don't deliver but this again enables you to land the next city so, because you didn't get too much bad press or something. But I think also that this reason one more that uh, investors have uh, power and if you have money. If you have money, you can buy. If you, uh, you, and you have a lot of uh, artists who want success, then it is much easier for them to find some local artists to be part of them or some local institution, give them some support, give money, and then you are part of them. You know, then it is also something that we must know. It, it's the idea of having a, a promotional success for a substantive failure. That needs to be explored, but I think it's also a greater role of criticism. And I've said this before in other talks. There's no uh, school of art history at the University of Krishna. There's no mechanism in the higher education system here, which is another criticism of mine of trying to create that as part of it. So there's a, I think, the reviews that I've read, it's the very typical thing of dealing with Kosovo. People with kid gloves, right? they come, they don't want to say something too harsh because of the delicate situation that's happening there. You really have to, uh, to to know the circumstances. You really have to be on the ground and be a real scholar of the region to feel confident to criticize substantively without making it personal to somebody. And that's I, I think uh, what Albert is saying is there's some value in failure, and that really is echoing art practice too. Failure is very interesting when you're working in the art. So if we can find a way to encourage a criticism that actively seeks out what those failures are, some of them were voiced tonight, then we can have fertile ground for, uh, for something more that's outside of the manifesto that you very rightly saw. In one year, it's manifesto. What? <laughs> you know, what, what was that thing? You know, oh, that's when uh, you know. That's when we, you know, some event happens. I think that needs to be explored. Maybe, maybe that's the fertile ground. How do we develop criticism internally that would be internationally uh, viable and and um, you know and uh, maybe that's the value of manifesto. It's value. The substantive. So the biggest concern for me is the culture 
that they supported or created also. For instance, if you hear stories of youth they were, that they were part of the structure organization and how, what they faced there, like intimidation, threats and things like that, it's like, what is this thing about? You know? Does it, yeah, does it export the idea of freedom in art or exploration, or does it really, like, they were, you were, you were there together with me, yeah, like, the, one of the youth said, is he started his testimony, it was like, oh, we need no, you know, like, uh, in English, it's like, I, how do you say that, I don't know, but it was just pure, pure, pure anger of what they experienced, you know, and then I asked, like, who, what, like, they, said that they were even calling us on phones and intimidating us. And I was like, well, who said, who did that, you know? The chief mediator. You know, and then you realize, and come on, you know, because, like, I'm not sure if the chief mediator would do that if she would be a chief curator, right? Because I think the profession somehow makes you behave differently, I think. I don't know. I mean, I'm just throwing this, I think, when you... No, this is still... So I don't think that they are, but I think when you wear that, it's, I don't know, I would just wish maybe. You know, I dedicated almost half of my career in collaborating with um, organizations that are more activist than professional museums or um, curatorial enterprises. And uh, one thing that I want also this, uh, kind of practice is that uh, at least uh, what you should hope to do with activist projects is not to do harm. Maybe you want to change the tech or the world, but at least you start with not doing harm. Unfortunately, uh, you know, this is not shared uh, much wider in the art world, so that's why I said not necessarily, you know, um, not all curators subscribe to this, and even less institutions subscribe to this, not doing harm. And this was for me, I was just curious about uh, saying whether uh, manifest aside of doing really good things did some harm, just for myself, you know, like, Evaluating, and I did notice that there was some harm done. Uh, intentionally, maybe not, but even unintentionally, we don't have excuse with 4.8 million, 40, how many million of years. So it's really um, unexplicable and unacceptable with so much money to do. Where you promise to do something good. That's what's let's, let's take one more comment or question. Oh. <coughs> uh, so, as Kapuji said outside of the so you're talking about promise. What are the promises? To read the initial statement that they issued, and we could stay on that level. Okay? So the initial statement was to, to bluntly call it very emancipatory, empowering existing spaces, creating new spaces, empowering the artists, changing policy, you know, bridging the gap between policy makers, practitioners, and cinema. You know, so it's not that they got this just like that. So there were a lot of promises. A lot. For instance, in the, in, the, in the level of changing policy, policy did not change. Even after Manifesta got the, 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 the award, let's say, policies in the level of the city and the Ministry of Culture remain the same. The level of support for visual arts is the same. You know, it's the same. It's not that it increased dramatically, you know, so that you would have more potential to exhibit Cultural artists, when Manifesta comes, no, they were forced to 
after the initial selection, they were forced to launch an open war with much more reduced criteria, you know, so that they increased the percentage, basically. When they issued the public notice about the final list of the artists, they said 47% of artists are also artists. Precisely, 47. And that's odd. You don't see this in any normal exhibition, right? I mean, it was the first time that I saw it, actually. And then you have other, other similar uh, gestures that highlight that something was not going well. Right? And there are, there are many. But uh, the idea for me is also to, to open up discussion and, and to uh, reflect. And, and Daniel is right, maybe. I mean, it's, it's difficult to, uh, to, cre to create potential when there's no practice, let's say so, because the University of Christina when it was created, the Department of Art, Art History was never created. What is interesting, in some brief research that I did, or let's say discussion, I realized, that because there was a split in the system in the 90s, uh, actually the University of Pristina now in Literarica, uh had created the Department of Art History. I don't know if it still functions or not. So, there is a Department of Art History in it's a north, right? But this department of arts history is totally ignored, like not related to any developments in the rest of the country. And there's no department of arts history in, in Pristina. But also, how that department of history functions in Mitrovica North is unknown, right? It, and artists here, they struggle, they chase people to write a small text about their work because there's no one actually professional enough to write the text about. There's no critique, there's no, and it's so easy to come here and say we don't have a curator, we have a mediator. Everyone thinks that's possible and allowed, but why, why it happened here and not Frankfurt, Ljubljana, I don't know where, why here it is allowed? And this is the place where lots of experiments happen actually. We have many things here, or why the theme of visa? Isolation is not touching any of the artworks. Hmm? Is it? Why? Why it's not? Why it's not? Hmm? No, no, why? Because, like, this is like you have 1.8 million citizens who are the only ones in Europe isolated. And it's, it's, it's real. You know, it's nothing like we spend around 60 million euros in visa applications every year. Hmm? Yeah, it's not important, right? It's not relevant. It's not but the talking points for the yes. they mentioned social political all over the place. So the idea is, you know, this exploration is supposed to be rich, deep, social political, engaged in context, but like I said, but there's a lot of kid gloves on it because they're intense, you know, uh, themes. They're, they're intense and they're long term. So who has the authority to speak on it. We were talking with Yelena, I can see her now, uh, about the importance of art criticism. You know? We are both uh, art historians and maybe started our careers as art critics. We moved towards uh, curating, and as soon as I started curating, I stopped writing uh, this conventional art criticism because I saw it as a conflict of interest. But uh, having said so, I don't diminish, I don't undermine, uh, on the contrary, the importance of art criticism. And uh, what uh, Albert said, I found really important because if you don't have um, local art critics who can write about manifesto, with uh, this uh, local knowledge, situated knowledge, uh, and addressing critically the exhibition, then uh, it, it's really impossible to see this from this point of view. You always read this criticism from uh, you know, journalists that come from abroad, that spend a few days here, but mm -hmm. there will be no professional art criticism uh, raised here. I gave several courses here actually in uh, writing. Uh, that was the first collaboration uh, long 
long time ago, and uh, the original idea was that this course will develop in some kind of uh, even non-official program of uh, art writing and art criticism. Never happened. And now I heard, and I don't know what's going on in the that manifesto also advertised a summer school, which was for me a new really fun, to be honest. Yeah. And uh, I haven't heard what happened with that. And again, you know, the same fashion, like there is nothing here, so you bring it here. It, it, it's really uh, well, 15 years that I'm coming to this summer school, not each time, but you know, it, it's a kind of really long term investment in this um, lacking of this kind of uh, you know, discursive uh, approach towards art. Not only art production, but the production of discourse about art. Maybe just. One last thing, uh, something quite general actually, but you mentioned before that uh, we're different um, and I just want to remind that we're actually not so different and that we should maybe more remind where we're similar because that's when we grow together but then where we're different that will just separate us. Because if I think about my siblings, I'm so different from my siblings, but so similar to, to my friends who are from all over the world. When you talk different, I think about different between Serbs and Albanians. I think different about culture, like manifest is coming from culture, somebody manifest is coming from another country. I really think that always when I talk, I'm talking about global stuff. I really not thinking and meaning and different between that is like this I don't want to sit here and speak with mm -hmm. all of you. Okay. <laughs> Just to conclude then, this is not uh, yeah, if anyone else wants to say. I realize that to to yeah, in my <laughs> in my brief observation of the college research, I realized that Manifesta does not record the audio of conferences, they just take pictures, actually. Mm -hmm. That's why it was important to hold the event as well. And uh, from what I know, they are very interested to protect the image of the how media holds it on the festival. So it's all about the image. There's no you can you can talk and you can look, but uh, there's no documentation available of any of the discussion. So I want to thank you for this. Uh, for this uh, first public hearing on this uh, on this issue, uh, just also to inform you that several case continues with this reflective group meetings. The next meeting is on Tuesday, and we can share with you the information. You can also attend the meeting. Yeah. Thank you.